This is going to be a quick one. What is up, everybody? It is your local auto fan, and I'm here to talk to you about the uh, dismantling the 3812 destruction at the hands of the BC Lions. The Ottawa Red Blacks got blown out. Um, I've got such a weird feeling about this game because I knew we weren't going to win every single game. Uh, on the one hand, we, we just you know, ended a six game undefeated streak. I can't be that mad. Like we, we, we went six full games without a single loss. We weren't about to go, you know, and not drop a single game for the rest of the season. We were not going to be like a 13, two and one team as, as much as it was, or not 13, it would have been like 15. Yeah. We weren't about to be a 15, two and one team. We weren't like, let's, let's, Snap back to reality. That would have been really nice, but I think we all knew that we were going to have some losses. Back-to-back -back games against Nathan Rourke. We knew Nathan Rourke was eventually going to return to form. And facing him in two games, back-to-back, -back, a home and a home, uh, yeah, you know, you, you got to expect at least one of them will be a loss. The fact that it wasn't both is a good sign. Uh, we had Acklin out, Addison out, Pimpleton out. We had a lot of injuries. Um, Stove, one of the rookies that came in, actually had a decent game, but our offense never woke up. Our offense was all game. They were bad. All game. But what upsets me is how we lost, you know? Because I'm not ready to panic. Like, we're 7-3-1. and one. We're still second in the league. Still, like, no matter even what happens in the uh, the rest of the games this week. Um, I'm recording this as, I believe, it's the Toronto-Hamilton game is being played. Doesn't matter how that game ends. Ottawa's still second in the East. Our next game against Toronto, you know, will definitely have more impact if Toronto wins against Hamilton. But in either case, if we beat Toronto, we we really put them on the ropes. In terms of trying to get a home playoff game. Like, we're still objectively fine. And a blowout sucks because it makes you look bad. But at the same time, part of me is like, whether you lose by 1 or 100, it doesn't make a difference. A loss is a loss. And, you know, it... It almost felt like a scheduled loss, even though this is definitely a game where going into it, I thought it was winnable. Uh, it's Nathan, but it's Nathan Rourke in his hometown. Yeah, yeah, we had a bunch of injuries. It happens. Games like this happen. Sometimes your offense just, it's not happening. They can't click. They can't wake up. It, it does happen. Um, I got a bunch of, I took a bunch of notes as the game's going on. I don't really think I need these. Um, to tell you the story of the game, which is in the first half, our defense didn't get a stop. I, I guess if you count uh, preventing a touchdown once and, and having them kick a field goal instead as a stop, but every single drive in the first half, BC scored. There was not a single drive that ended with anything less than three points for BC. Every single drive, they put points up. We did not do that. And I've said it before. I'll say it again. I'll continue to say it. If you can't take Ottawa out of the game by the first half, you're going to lose. Or by the end of the first half. We were out of the game by the end of the first half. So we lost. Um, the only game where that's, I guess, kind of not true was against Winnipeg, where we went into halftime down 10. But we were down 10 with our backup quarterback in. Uh, that's that's not a recipe for success. And every other game, uh, there was the Montreal game where we were down 20 to 1. We were down, I can't remember the exact score, but we were down like 19 points um, against, uh, oh, I just said it, against, against Montreal and the 10 point uh, deficit to Winnipeg. And then there was this game. We were down 31 to 6. The second half, our defense shored up, actually. Our defense did pretty good. Um, they only allowed seven points, one touchdown, which, you know, it was at a point where any points would have completely ended the game. But I can blame the defense a little bit in the first half. But at the same time, they basically were on the field the whole half. Our offense got nothing done, mostly two and outs, mostly punting. We didn't actually have, you know... 
consistent drives where our defense could take a rest. So, no duh, one of the best quarterbacks in in the league in the past two seasons, in Nathan Rourke, absolutely burned us. You need your defenses. We saw what happened when our defense gets rest. We, we can beat Nathan Rourke. We did beat Nathan Rourke. Last week, Drew Brown looked like the better quarterback. He didn't have as many weapons. Our offense wasn't able to wake up. And in the second half, our offense still didn't really wake up. We got one touchdown that you can't even really thank the offense for. Because our defense, the first time they were on the field in the second half, they got a pick, and they got it down to, like, the BC-14. So, like, yes, we did score a touchdown, but... When you're down 31 to 6 early in the third quarter and you have the ball on your opponent's 14, you have to score. That's literally the only option. Um, we did have opportunities in the second half to at least make a game out of it, and we squandered all of them. Um, they missed a field goal. We returned it deep. We returned it to about their 40. We are at least in Lewis Ward range, which he had a good game. Um, he, he got two field goals. One was pretty long, too, and he nailed it. And I remember thinking when we were at the 40, we were down 19 points. That's not good. But I will say this. 19 points is not a guarantee. Last season, Ottawa was involved in two 19-point turnarounds. There was the crumback, and there was the game against, shocker, the BC Lions. We were up 19 points, and we blew it. They came back, and they won. So 19 points by no means is a guarantee in the CFL. And... If Lewis Ward gets the opportunity to kick a field goal, if we just don't get sacked, it's at least a two-score game until eventually they score that touchdown. But even then, that, that would give us something. That would give us some kind of hope, some kind of life that, hey, it's two scores, it's the CFL, things happen. We had a few drives where it looked like maybe we could get something going, and and it didn't happen. Um you know, there was there, 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 there was a time in the first half where the most passing yards was, Rich, was Richie Leone. And it was um, uh, at a time that I actually really liked. I'm trying to find exactly what the score was. Uh, it was, it was I believe, 24 to 6. And, um, or maybe, no, I, I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Um, but whatever the score was... It was it was already a blow up. It was already BC just railroading us, and we were deep in our own territory. And we went for it on third down with a, a trick play. Uh, we it was a fake punt. I liked the play call. Um, there was a time where we were deep at our own twenty, and it was third and one, and it looked like we were about to punt. And then BC called a timeout, and we made the rational decision to go for it because it's like the fourth quarter, and we're losing by a bazillion points. And so I am going to say I do like those play calls being made because last season they don't get made or they, they fail. We, we did convert that third and one. So like small snippets that were good, but in an overall just dog awful, awful, awful game. Just disgusting. Nathan works here. Like it's the Nathan work show. Be happy, honestly, that... A, we're in the East, and we aren't going to have to be playing him a whole bunch. And, and B, it's a West game. It's two points. And really, we pl we had two games against BC. We split it. You know, um, of the three teams that we've lost to, we've played two of them twice. And we split. So, it, I mean, that's, again, something good that, you know, so far... Um, the only teams in the league we haven't beaten is Toronto, we haven't played, and Montreal we played once and we got blown out. Um, but we're at least showing that, yeah, like, we could win any game, and you know what? I'm, 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 I may be sick, I, as you can see, I'm a, I'm a sicko, you know, go sense go. I am a, I am a sicko. I actually rather get blown out than lose a close game, um, We've had, I think, three walk-off field goals so far this season. Four, if you include the one against Saskatchewan. Uh, well, we had Edmonton, Hamilton, and Calgary. Walk-off field goal wins. Um, I've been on the other end of that. I, mem I remember last season, it looked like we took a, a late lead against Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan comes down the field and kicked a walk-off winner. And I was sick 
to my stomach. It like ruined the, the like m looking forward to the next game. Like I was thinking, oh, the Red Blacks have another game, and we were this close. I, I, I mean, I went into the first half, you know, thinking, okay, we might we might be able to do this. Beat Nathan Morgan back to back weeks in his hometown. Go eight two and one. Be one of the dominant forces in the league. And then I went in the second half being like, well, you know, it's always next week. You know, hopefully we get, you know, um, some players get healthy. Maybe more practice with the rookies will we'll help Drew Brown. Um, maybe playing against a defense that isn't quite as elite will help. Um, Chad Kelly, who, I mean, is already like the most hateable guy in the CFL. And I'm going to get way more into just that situation next game, but... I don't think he should be in the league. I don't care how good he is at throwing the football. There are some things that are more important. I digress. Um, hopefully we can get to him. And I don't think he's a Nathan Rourke. I don't. I I, I do think that Rourke is, is going to be a little bit better than him this season. Uh, call me crazy. Call me crazy. But our defense is good. And our defense made the adjustments we needed to see in the second half. Again, I get it. BC probably wasn't trying to absolutely burn us, but Nathan Rourke never got benched. They never rested their starters, and we never rested ours. And, and honestly, that did surprise me. I actually thought in the second half that we should put in Mazzoli. Um, not because necessarily Brown was doing terribly. He didn't have a good game, but like it wasn't an all-time terrible game. But just to try in something different, maybe try getting a spark somehow, or at the very least, rest your starters. Don't, you know, get injured in a game that you're losing by, you know, more than 20. Like, it's 31-6. to 6. We aren't winning this one. Rest our starters. Let our backups get some reps in. Um, let Mazzoli go in. Or Crum. Let Crum, you know, have this opportunity to improve. But they kept working. We kept Brown in. Which, again, that did surprise me. But... In the second half, our defense only allowed seven points. It was a very low-scoring second half for both teams. It's just the first half, BC didn't stop scoring. And we couldn't stop them. Our defense looked like Swiss cheese because our offense was completely anemic. And then, even in the second half, our offense stayed anemic. We got six points. And again, those six points are mostly thanks to a good return off of a pick. And we had other opportunities. We had other good returns and other times where we had good field goal position or good field position to start our drive and it went nowhere. Um, Devontae Dedman gets injured, which is awful because he was having another great game. And without Pimpleton, it, it does get me a little bit worried about our, our returning game. Um, I don't have much to say. We, 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 we lost on all three stages of the game. We lost by pretty significant margins. Um, our special teams was a little bit better, but you know, special teams, you can't, you can't rely on special teams to win you football games in the CFL. Okay. Like we can't just tell that Mendel, right? Just get three return touchdowns and we'll be fine. Come on. Um, our defense had a better second half. They, they, they did get Rourke to look a lot more human. They got the pick. They got multiple stops. They got stops. They only allowed a score once through the uh, entirety of the second half. That makes me hopeful going into next game. And last game, it was the same thing where we started the game bad. Um, it was, I think, 10 nothing at the end of uh, the first quarter this game. It was like 10-3 to at the end of the first quarter last game. And... The Lions were still kind of having their way with us. And then our defense kind of clamped down. Our offense started clicking. We got back into the game. We were within a score at halftime. Every single game that we are within one score or better, we win at halftime. Except for the tie against Saskatchewan. We don't lose. I'll put it that way. If we are within one score or better at halftime, we don't lose. And if we are within multiple scores or more... At halftime, we do lose. It's been right down the middle. That's how every single Red Blacks game has gone this season. Check the score at halftime. If it's close, Red Blacks are not going to lose. And if it's, you know, nine points or greater, yeah, Red Blacks are losing. Um, I think our defense can keep us in it next game. And that's the thing. 
As an Ottawa fan, instinctively, I feel like I should be hitting the panic button. I feel like I should look at our injuries and think, oh my gosh, this is terrible. We're injured all up and down our offense. I should look at how this game played out, how the first half played out. I feel like I should be hitting that panic button, saying, oh my gosh, this is it. Everything's cr c collapsing. We're going to crumble. We aren't going to win another game all season, and we're going to miss the playoffs. But it's hard to say that because I've seen how this team played this season and we just, we just didn't show up ready to play. And when we do show up ready to play, we tend to do well. And I think when we're back at home in Ottawa, we're going to come out ready to play. I think that we are going to have a good shot at beating Toronto. Then we face Hamilton. Then we face Montreal at home. And I think that's going to be... A very, the Toronto and Montreal games are going to be very important because they're both home games against Eastern Division opponents that are pretty good. If we can beat Toronto, we get really close to locking a playoff spot and locking up a, a home playoff game. And if we can beat Montreal, then that kind of shows, okay, we could beat any team in this league. And, and that's the one thing about this game that scares me the most. Before this game, I was like, we could do it. We could win the Grey Cup. It's going to be hard to beat Montreal in the playoffs, but we could do it. And this is the first time where I'm like, could we? Like, could we realistically actually beat Montreal in a playoff game? Like, this game does not make me feel comfortable in that notion. I think the next three weeks are going to be very important. Obviously, if we lose to Hamilton, then I would, you know, if we lose to Toronto, then Hamilton, I'd start raising all the alarm ball bells. Or I'd start saying, you know, watch out. Things are dangerous. Things are bad. But we got two games against Montreal, two games against Toronto, two games against Hamilton, and a game against Saskatchewan. For a total of seven games left in the season, let me, uh, Make sure my math is right on that one. Seven, three, and one. That's, yeah, it's seven games. Two against every Eastern opponent plus Saskatchewan. I'm not going to sit here and be like, we're going to win seven or six. But I think we could easily get at least four. I think it's, it's, it's fairly realistic to say we could beat Hamilton twice. And between four, the other five games, could we get... Two out of three, you know, between Toronto twice, Saskatchewan, and, and two Montreal games. Especially when you consider that either, you know, we beat Montreal at home because we're home and we're Ottawa and we're very good at home. Or we don't. And Montreal probably has already locked up first in the East by the time we get to Thanksgiving. So they don't really have anything left to play for and they are likely going to be playing an Ottawa team that is fighting for their lives either in the playoffs or for a home playoff game which is very valuable especially for an Ottawa team that let's face it has been dangerous at home that already has a winning record at home so I, I do think that there's a, a, a good enough chance that Montreal if they beat us at home they'll rest their starters in Montreal because they don't want to like, like, the last thing they want is for Cody Fajardo to go down with injury two weeks before the playoffs, three weeks before the playoffs, because we are doing everything we can, because we need to win. This is a reminder that we're a human team, that we are a relatively inexperienced team in terms of this core, with this quarterback and this group, and that injuries happen. I'm not ready to panic yet. It's just a bad game. They happen. Go on to next week and uh, let's make Chad Kelly regret ever, ever coming back. And as always, go Ottawa, go.